one of the most important jobs in politics, keeping MPs in order and Parliament running smoothly. Just talking to Jonathan about it this morning. MPs will choose their next Speaker of the House of Commons following the retirement of John Burke. Uh, there are eight candidates in the running, all senior MPs from across the Labour and Conservative parties. The winner will be decided in a vote this afternoon. So what challenges face the new speaker? Joining us now from Westminster is Hannah White from the Institute for Government. Uh, she once worked closely with former speakers Michael Martin and John Burko as well. Morning to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So first of all, let's just talk about the job of speaker. How important is it? It's really a crucial role, as we've seen in the course of the last few years particularly when Parliament is in the situation it is at the moment where the government doesn't have a majority and, and in recent years when it hasn't had a significant majority, the decisions that are made by the Speaker about what goes on in the House of Commons chamber can really make a, a difference to what the outcomes uh, uh, the Parliament decides upon. OK, so there's eight different MPs standing. How, will they, how do they get chosen? And they all sort of can have their own campaigns, do they? They do, and they have an opportunity today to make a pitch to the House. They'll all stand up in a random order selected by ballot and, and try to persuade MPs, those who are here and aren't off on the campaign trail, why it's them who should be given this really important job. And the, the process is a secret ballot. Uh, they, or MPs get to choose, even though the whips might try to be persuading them to vote one way or the other, Whips will have, uh, the MPs will have their own reasons to vote and the Whips won't be able to see who they vote for because it's a secret ballot. OK. Um, you worked for um, the Speaker, so just tell us about the kind of detail, the kind of level of knowledge the Speaker has in order to be able to do their job. It's really important for them to understand not just the rules of the House but also the principles on which those rules are based. So. Uh, the rules are quite complicated, as we've seen over the past few years, and it's really important to have someone who can make a judgment, who has to make a decision about what is in the interest of the House, given what the House has previously decided about how it wants to run itself. But at the same time, they have a lot of support. They have clerks, they have staff behind the scenes who every day will be giving them advice on what rules apply, what might come up, and what decisions they might be required to make in the chair. How would you describe John Burko's approach and his use of language, for example? Well, I think, you know, I knew John Burko before he became Speaker, and I was actually surprised when he decided to stand, because I thought one of the things he most enjoyed as a backbench MP was being able to give speeches in the House. And actually, I think we saw that come through in his approach to being Speaker. He has probably talked more and you know, made more opportunity both inside and outside the House to, to, to talk to the House, to, to make points he thinks are important, but also to go outside, uh, both in terms of education and just generally talking to people about the role of Parliament uh, and trying to raise its profile in that way. And he has been, I mean, I don't know quite how to describe it, flamboyant in his use of language, uh, uh, in the way he talks. Can we expect the next speaker to be like that or will it be very individual? I think every speaker is individual. They'll bring their own approach and they will be also reacting to what's gone before. I think, you know, John Burko came in off the back of the expenses scandal. He felt that there was a job to do to sort of rehabilitate the House at that point. Uh, the person who comes in after today will, will be also reacting to the way that John Burko did the job and responding to that. I think their job will also be massively shaped in the short term by the outcome of the election. If we see another minority government or, you know, a, a coalition or something like that, their job will be more significant, there'll be more focus on them than if we get a majority government. And can we just talk about sort of individual politics as well, because they could come from either party. Um, are they supposed to be independent? What is their role? Yes, so they, uh, whatever party they stood for, they give up that party affiliation once they become speaker. They're supposed to be impartial. There's some kind of loose sort of thing that they're supposed to go backwards and forwards between the two main parties, but that's really not um, uh, uh, any sort of inhibition. It could well be uh, one of the Conservative candidates that wins today, even though John Burko was a Conservative before he became speaker. And there is a tradition that other parties don't stand against them. Is that right in the general election? Yes, although that hasn't been universally observed, of course, Nigel Farage stood against John Burko at one point, um, and you know it does depend on on the on who it is. But yes, the convention is that when you then stand for election, uh, nobody stands against you. You're the speaker seeking re-election, and that presumably will be a massive relief for whoever it is who wins today. Um, and just tell us as well, um, have you got? Do you, do you have your money on anybody in particular, or how is it looking at this point? Uh, it seems there's a lot of support from uh, across parties for, for Lindsay Hoyle, uh, but uh, Harriet Harman was an early front runner. Uh, the probably the most uh, uh, forward, um, most supported uh, Conservative candidate seems to me is Eleanor Lang. Both uh, Lindsay Hoyle and Eleanor Lang, of course, are current deputy speakers, so they have some experience of doing the job. 
uh, which uh, MPs may think is important. And the important thing today is actually it's quite unusual. We're voting for a speaker before an election rather than after, and MPs will have views about what's important in a speaker when they're choosing their candidate today, which they wouldn't necessarily have if they were new to Parliament coming in after an election. Uh, it's very interesting. That uh, vote takes place a little bit later. Um, Hannah White, a former clerk at the House of Commons, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.